In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Our Lady, the Blessed Sacrament, pray for us. <clears throat> Just before I begin, to remind you, it, it's rarely we have the problem of having too many priests, especially after my homily earlier, for confession. So at the moment, there's the two parish priests in the confessionals there. I think they're still there. And Father Andre is in the work sacristy down there, where they normally clean all the sacristy stuff, so you can clean your soul in the work sacristy as well, if you wish. That's just, if you go in here and turn right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> as the theme of today has been going, and the theme of the season <coughs> of Advent, Advent, as you know, it's a time of expectation, a time of waiting, but most importantly for us, is a time of preparation. It is a time of preparation for what? We're preparing to celebrate once again that historical moment, that moment that happened when Christ showed his face to the world. He became incarnate at the Annunciation, March 25th. That's when uh, Our Lady, he was miraculously conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit within the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Nine months later, the 25th of December, we celebrate his birth. The coming to be uh, of the man who is God, of the God who became man and has come to redeem us and to offer us salvation. For St. Francis, this was his favorite feast by far, even more than Easter. Although liturgically, Easter is a much higher feast. Well, not much higher, it's a higher feast. But for St. Francis, this is without the incarnation, without the birth, there is no Easter. Without God becoming a baby, a man, we don't have anything else. And so on this day, <clears throat> as you probably heard the story, Christmas fell on a Friday one year, as it will do also this year. And the friars have it in their rule that they're not to eat meat on Fridays. And a friar who was being a bit concerned went to St. Francis and said, you know, Brother Francis, it's Friday, do we eat meat, even though it's Christmas? And St. Francis said, how dare you call Christmas a Friday, as that is a day of penance. There shall be no penance and the celebration of the birth of our Lord. He said, eat meat, feed meat to the walls, and if they won't eat it, nail meat to the walls. Must be an Italian expression, I'm not sure. But nevertheless, this idea that this is such a joy-filled day there shall be no reason or even thought of penance because today is the day we celebrate the beginning of our redemption. Now we prepare during Advent as we do in Lent for Easter by acts of penance, by extra prayers that we might do. So we, we, we wear purple because it is a time of penance like Lent in a similar way to Lent. <coughs> Excuse me. But the best way that we can prepare has to be once again, sacramentally. You know, we, we love Christmas for all the reasons and maybe some great memories we have as children. Christmas is always a beautiful time of year. And as we wait for Jesus to be born once again, we might forget that he wants to come to us not just once at Christmas, but every week and every day and even twice a day in the Blessed Sacrament. Christ doesn't want us only to think of him at Christmas time. You know there are those, and maybe some of you have been this way in some part of your life, the C and E Catholics, the Christmas and Easter Catholics. They only go to visit Jesus on his birthday, which is nice, but God wants to see you much more often. The problem is, of course, and this is a hard truth, but it, is, it applies to every single one of us, we don't love him enough. If you love someone, you, you remember maybe when you're young and you fall in love and there's a puppy love and the butterflies in the stomach and all those kind of things. And that's all you can think of. You want to speak to the person every day, twice a day, more than twice a day. God is so much more. Christ is so much more than anyone we've ever loved. He's so much more lovable. He does 
love us perfectly. He does want to speak to us every day and every moment of the day. He wants to be in our company. And we often forget about him. Now, obviously, it's a bit different with Christ because he's not, you can't go up and hug him, so to speak. You go up and hug the monstrance. You'd probably hurt yourself with this type of monstrance. But he is nevertheless more real than anything else in the universe. And so he offers himself to us as food. This most intimate union, you know, the expression, you're growing up doing nutrition, you are what you eat. We become more like Christ when we consume him. He absorbs us, if you will, into him, just as the two shall become one in marriage. The similar analogy. Love always brings union. But let's not, let us not get confused with love and that thing I spoke about earlier, that puppy love and the butterflies in the stomach. That's nice and good. But again, anyone who's been married for any period of time or been in a relationship knows that that's not what love in the end is about. It's about a choice for wanting what is good for the other. What, is the, what good can we offer God? God who is all good and has everything. We can offer him more of what we call his external glory. We can offer to glorify his name, to give him everything that we have. That is the only good that we have to offer. Our very will to be with him, to not offend him, to not contribute to his pains on the cross anymore by our sins. How do we become strong enough to do that? Regular and frequent communion. The church, in her generosity and in her recognition of our need, allows us to receive communion twice a day. The second time has, has to be within the context of Holy Mass. Twice a day. Now, it is a rare moment when, or a rare opportunity that we would have the time to do that. <clears throat> but maybe one other time a week besides Sunday. Maybe there's something that you, that's something you can do for Advent in preparation for Christ's coming on Christmas Day. You receive him more often during Advent as a part of our preparation of receiving him. Because I assure you, there is no more solemn moment in your day or in your life than receiving Holy Communion. A holy communion, a holy union with Christ in the most fullest way that he could allow us. The only, the only way it's ever going to be greater than this is in heaven when we have the beatific vision where we see God as he is face to face, not under the veil of bread or anything else. We need to therefore <clears throat> pray and consider how we, how we consider the Blessed Sacrament. Is it something that we just receive on Sunday and think nothing else about? Even on our Sunday Masses, how do we prepare to receive Him? We may do so much preparation for Christmas with the food and the gifts and the decorations and that's all fine. But how much preparation do we do, do, we, uh, do to prepare ourselves to receive Him who is all and wants to give us more than we can imagine. It's sometimes easy uh, for us to become a little too familiar, especially for us who are touching the sacred every day as priests. But for all Christians who so often uh, come nearer, near the, the sacraments, we can have that little bit of familiarity, which is un unfortunate, or um, almost no, no contempt necessarily, but we forget about the love. Now, familiarity is important and good with Christ. But we need to keep in our hearts also of who this is. It is not a piece of bread. It is a person. It is a person who loves us, who loves you, each and every one of you, enough that he would leave the abode of heaven, although he never left heaven, but he would take on our human nature and suffer. And to suffer, to suffer for someone is... There's some real, uh, real pure love going on. To suffer, to die, to be crucified. And then, once he has, had taken on flesh, allow his flesh until the end of time to be at our mercy. 
You look at him now on the altar, defenceless, apart from us to defend him, completely exposed to abuse or to anything else, and as he has been throughout the centuries. But he's also allowed himself to be open to your love, to your sacrifices, to your correspondence, to his call. He's made himself completely non-threatening so that we may approach him with confidence. Let us, therefore, this Advent especially, approach him with confidence and with frequency. Together with the Sacrament of Reconciliation, let us make this an Advent unlike all our other Advents. So then when Christmas comes, we've already got so close to Christ in the Blessed Sacrament that holding him in our arms as a child will come naturally. You know, again, back to St. Francis, the, St. Francis was the one who invented, so to speak, the creche scene, the nativity scene. And it was in Gubbio. Uh, was it Gubbio? Yeah, anyway, let's say it was there. Um, that's where he had the thing with the wolf. <clears throat> but in any case, <coughs> excuse me, the ba baby Jesus miraculously appeared in his arms that day because he was so close to Christ, and most especially he was close to Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. This is what we are called to be. Eucharistic people. That's the only way we can be Christ-like. It's the only way we can find ourselves closer to him and being able to know him and love him is to be near to him in this most profound way of the Blessed Sacrament. Let us not waste one more day. Let us take every opportunity to be near him, be it in adoration, be it during Holy Mass and through Holy Communion. Because this is what he wants. He loves you. He wants to be close to you. He wants to be intimate with you so that you may be with him forever in this life to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.